Hey y'all, it's me Kimberly Clark and welcome to this, my 16th anti-haul video, aka best of anti-hauls, aka what I'm not gonna buy! What I'm not gonna buy! If you're not familiar with me, hi, I'm Kimberly Clark, I'm an anti-consumerist, feminist, drag, YouTube beauty guru. And this, my anti-haul series, is a fun kind of hyperbolic antidote to all the rampant consumerism that exists elsewhere on YouTube and the internet, specifically relating to makeup. Now this is the 16th video in this series. There are tons of other videos you can watch to help curb your spending desires. My Listen Up series is the place where you can learn even more about the different issues that lie behind a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about in this, my anti-haul series. Please check out in particular my video on white privilege. This is a really important video for the state of the world that we're in right now, please check it out. A lot of you who've joined my anti-haul series kind of late in the game have been requesting specific types of things to be anti-hauled. And most likely, since this is my 16th video, I've probably already talked about something similar. So for this video, I decided to take the best segments of all my other anti-haul videos and the most useful kind of rants and tangents that I've gone on in order to help you curb your spending. So, without further ado, let us jump into this, my best of anti-hauls. Here's the first thing that I'm not buying. It's the Urban Decay Vice 4 palette. Now, I don't own any Vice palettes. I actually only own two Urban Decay palettes. I own the Electric palette and the Naked Basics 1 palette. I looked at all those colors and I was like, this isn't making sense to me. Like, wow, there's a lot of different looks I can come up with with this, but like, it's huge and like, they're not super cohesive, you know? It's like a little challenge of a palette. It's like, put a couple of colors together, see if you could rock them if you dare. I don't need makeup palettes to be like, look at this crazy thing you can do. It's like, no, 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 like I'm an artist. Like a palette is a palette for me. Like I just want to see the options and the colors. I'm the creative, amazing person that then puts them together in interesting ways. I just want them to be organized in a way that I can understand them to then kind of further, you know, come up with something to do. So I don't, I'm like, ugh, forget about it. And it's 60 bucks, like, no, 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 don't need it. If you collect them, great, whatever. I do not. Uh, I'm not gonna start, and if you haven't, I don't suggest you start either because you do not need that palette. You don't need it. This is like a broader category of things. I'm not gonna buy subscription boxes. Ipsy, BoxyCharm, Birch Box, Food, Hunger, Snack Attack, Snacks, Fit, Fab, Fab, Fit, Fun. Basically what this is, you pay a monthly fee and you get a box full of samples, maybe like one or two full-size products, mostly samples in the mail. You get a lot of different stuff to try out. Like, it's the purpose of these subscription boxes to be like, you know what, I'm gonna curate the perfect kit of things that you could open up and you could use that one thing all month long and enjoy it and enjoy all those products and then you'll get another one the next month and you don't have to worry about buying new things and here come new... No, that is not, it's not to satisfy you at all. The purpose of these subscription things are to create hunger in you, to give you a little taste of something, like a little carrot on a string, like a little lipstick on a string, so like they're dangling it in front of you and they're like, come, come, you liked that lipstick so much, didn't you? You should get the full size. They're giving you little, like, little breadcrumbs to like follow on a trail of spending more and more money. If you are watching this, you probably have like, what you may have self-diagnosed as like a makeup addiction or like you know you have a propensity to buy makeup or you love makeup this is like feeding something that's not good for you for me like i i would like my the way that i deal with makeup, and i'm trying with these videos to like really 
have makeup be this thing that like really makes me happy and like the things that I own are things that really make me happy they're not things that I was tricked into buying bought because it was on sale like enticed or seduced or something like the hype sphere made me buy it or whatever YouTube made me buy it or whatever like no I want to buy things because I decide with a clear head that I can buy them and I don't need help like finding new things. I've got Sephora for that. I've got the internet for that. I've got plenty of outlets for me to go try new products if I'm interested in that. I think I spend too much money on makeup and so I'm not going to have makeup coming into my house every month that's like a new thing for me to be potentially seduced into buying. No, you don't want to even tempt yourself. You don't want that kind of enabling. Like, those subscription services are just literally enable enabling services. I, we have enough of it already. We have enough. Every other YouTube channel is there to enable you. Not me, girls. Not me. This is the Josie Marin Nirvana Hydrating Treatment. Josie Marin is, uh, she's got the argan oil, she does the whole argan oil skincare situation, argan oil everything, argan oil lip gloss, argan oil whipped foundation, argan oil whipped whatever, whipped cream, I don't know, argan, argan everything. This is some argan, I think I'm, there's got to be argan oil in it because it's her whole jam, but it's, it's a spray. I actually saw this watching a recent Carly Bible haul. She's a Jersey girl. Hi girl, hi Jersey, what's up? She talked about this and was like, I thought this was a setting spray. It's not a setting spray. It's actually a post cleansing preparation spray. And I'm like, uh, is that a priming spray? Like, is that... Is that what that is? But it's like, no, you put it on after you cleanse, but maybe before you moisturize, and then therefore before you prime. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. Hold the phone. Stop in the name of Argon. You are adding an yet another freaking another step, another step? No, do not open this door. Then it's going to be like the post eyeshadow pre lipstick spray, post dinner pre bedtime spray, the post binge watching Stranger Things pre drinking yourself to sleep spray. Like, no, like we cannot let these companies invent new steps in our- no! No! We've got- these things exist already. You could use any freaking spray as a post-cleansing spray. You could- anything could be a post- use freaking water as a post-cleansing spray. I often use tea tree water as a post-cleansing spray. I spray my face with some tea tree- and then I made it- I just added a couple drops of tea tree water to some water in a spray bottle, shook it up, Boom! I got my own post-cleansing spray and I didn't spend $38 for it. What? post clean? No. We already have too much shit we have to do. We already have to moisturize, prime, uh, bake, setting spray, spray this, spray- we need- we have all these spray- we have so much shit we have to spray. Now we have to spray another freaking spray on our spray break. No, I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. Josie Marin Nirvana- so, uh, y never mind. Never mind. Get it? Because that's a Nirvana al- Do you get it? You don't- That's a Nirvana album. The Morphe 35O. $22.99, very affordable, 35 shadows, bang for your buck, it's there. Why don't you need this palette? Because 35 orange shadows is bullsh- You do not need that many of the same freaking color. Are these colors very flattering on a lot of different skin tones? Yes. Are they very on trend right now? Yes. Can you get probably all the shades from the the stinky peach palette with this palette? Yeah, you probably can. But do you really need that many? And yes, I know the price is like affordable. Like it's, you're not going to be wasting a ton of money on this, but like that does not matter! You're gonna have a giant, ambiguous palette that's gonna live in the back of your makeup drawers like you can't see, you don't remember what it is. If you've got any other Morphe palettes, you're screwed because they all look exactly the same from the outside. You're gonna have to rifle through it, find the 35O, then you're gonna get it, and then when you open it up, you're gonna be like, oh, I just wanna do like a simple neutral orange, I just want a simple like orangey, beautiful, I just want a simple, 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 just really quick, simple, simple. Open it up, you got 35 of these staring at you being like, use me, use me, use me. If you have a problem making decisions, this is not the palette for you. When you use any of these shadows, it's just like the Stinky Peach palette. You're gonna come out with the same exact look. Do you need 35 different shadows in like the cheapest packaging ever to help you achieve that look? Nope. No, you don't. And the hype sphere of this is just like, 
it's over, it's, mo it's the most I've ever seen. It's the most, not for nothing, when you see people talking about this product and hyping it up so much, and then you see that they have an affiliate code down below, that means that they will benefit from you buying it. I know when people are like, I'm gonna be honest, I have an affiliate code, and you're like, oh, they're so honest. Of course they're honest, but like that doesn't mean they're still not potentially talking about this product, because even if they're subconsciously doing it, they're making money off of you purchasing it if you click on their affiliate link. So of course they're not gonna talk about it, because they want you to buy it, because they want to make money, because we're human and American. I do not have an affiliate code with Morphe. I've already talked about some Morphe stuff in the past, and I've talked love about some Morphe stuff in the past. But this palette, Morphe 35O, ah uh ah, -uh, I'm never gonna buy it. Not gonna buy it. Not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna buy MAC limited edition bulk. Enjoy. Okay, and last up, I gotta pull up my freaking phone for this. This is an email from Sephora. The subject is sets that will almost leave you speechless. They're not gonna leave you speechless, they're gonna leave you broke. So Sephora, as you know, has lots of sets. They have like a lot of sampler sets that are, you know, under $100, maybe they're in the $50 range, and you get like 20 lip products or like 10 different mascaras to try out. You've already heard me talk about like sample sets and things like that. No, no, don't need it, not gonna buy it. It's a bad cycle, don't do it, don't do it. These are not that. These are sets of like, full size, these are like total collection sets. For example, we got this legendary lip collection from Kat Von D for $240. It's 15 full sized everlasting liquid lipsticks. I'm not gonna lie, I want that, I want that. I, the freaking, there's a GIF. There's a GIF, it's a GIF, it's moving. I'm not gonna lie and tell you that I didn't watch this like 30 times when I opened this email. I did, I'm like, <sighs> who doesn't want all that? Uh, that's fabulous. $240, you're like, well that's a ton of money, but I guess if I had to buy them all individually, it would cost more. Yes, of course. You would never buy this many of them though. The other sets included are like East meets West Indulgent, oh, from Tatcha. I can't even with how problematic that name. East meets West? Are you in a, are, what? Uh, we got a weekend getaway in a bottle, the perfume. Oh, we got uh, like tons of full-size Makeup Forever eyeliner, the aqua liner, which I've never used to hear, it's great. $250, $250. You got a $300 dry bar hair dryer. What else, you got some masks. You got, oh, you got five masks from Glam Glow for $270. Oh no, 11 pieces, what does that mean? Oh, there's some extra stuff in it, there's a brush. Oh, okay. Here's why you can't buy these. Yeah, you're getting a full size product, so you're getting something that is like much more, I think, readily usable that you'll reach for because it's like full sized. However, you would never buy these if they weren't in a set. You would never buy all 15 of the Kat Von D liquid lipsticks. And if you already own them, then you don't need them. But I feel like this is also marketed to those people that have like five of them and like want all of them and like there's that idea of totality with this type of product too that I think is really kind of sneaky Sephora it's sneaky it's not just samples it's not just sample size it's like full sizes you get a full thing you get the full collection you get the full line you get it all you get it all but you know what they say in Dick Tracy because once you have it all you will find all else aboard that the Things are bliss. There's one thing you'll miss, and that's more. more, more, more. Once you have it all, once you have everything, 
you're gonna like, you still want more, like you're never gonna be satisfied. You're like one time purchase of $240 is less than the $500 I spent last year on liquid lipsticks. No, it's not gonna, it's not, no. It's not gonna stop, it's not gonna put a button on your spending and you know it. It's just gonna encourage more. You're gonna buy all that, you're gonna be like, well now I have all the Makeup Forever Aqualiners. Maybe I should try all the Marc Jacobs Highliners. Maybe I should try all that. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then it's like, then you're, now you're collecting sets. It doesn't even matter about the brand, you're just collecting more and more from everyone. You just need everyone's everything all the time, everything, everything. No! You don't need any of these and you're not going to buy them. Don't buy them. Just don't buy them. Just don't. If there's like two items in one of these sets that you want, buy those. If there's three, buy those. Don't buy this set because it's a set. It's a thing where you're not even going to use all of them. You're not going to use the ones that don't suit you. Of course, you know that. Then you're not even just going to have samples that you're lying around not being used. You're going to have full-size products that you're not even using. Ugh, what a waste. What a waste. No, I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. No. Sorry, sets. Set match point. Can we do a tennis, a tennis sound? Is there, do we have a tennis sound? Let's try that. It's the stinky elephant in the room. It's the two-faced stinky peach collect. It's the two-faced sweet peach collection. This is an entire collection that was whipped up to support the relaunch of the two-faced sweet peach palette. You already know how I feel about that. You could watch me talk about it right here. Okay, then we've got the Sweet Peach Glow Palette. This is like their highlighter palette. Oh my god, girl, they're gonna, oh. They figured it out. They got the peach stuff. They put it in a highlighter palette. Everybody loves highlighters. We love it. Honey, no. Like, I've got my peach blushes. I've got my highlighter. I've got it. This is nothing new. How different is that peach blush from the shade uh, I Will Always Love You from the Too Faced Love Flushes? I love these blushes, they're so good. I have to keep talking about these because I talk so much about Too Faced, but I really, truly love these blushes. They're so good, and there is a peachy toned blush in this called I Will Always Love You, and it's gorgeous. And guess what, it doesn't freaking smell like peach. No, what are you paying for? You're paying for the hype, you're paying for being part of the peach family and you're paying for, you're literally paying for Too Faced to make more stop action animations when I would really just like them to stop. St stop. I don't need more stop action. I want you to just stop. Don't release another honey butter graham cracker pa Come on, people. Anyway, we're sorry. Sorry, we're getting off track. We're still on the peaches. So you don't want to get the whole highlighter palette. Why not get the Stinky Peach Blush single? It's called Papa Don't Peach. Did they name this product to offend me? Like, did they, were they like, I know she doesn't like the peach smell. I know she doesn't like the branding. And I, but well, there's one thing I think that we're missing and it's a punny name. Let's give it to her in this product. Papa don't peach. You're in trouble deep because this is, I don't know what to say, but I, the puns and that freaking logo, like, does that, does that peach, does it look like a member berry? Has anyone been watching South Park? Like how creepy is all that shit with the member berries? Isn't it like a little member berry that's like secretly trying to undermine all of our brains and like destroy the country? Doesn't it look like a member berry? It's like a little peach. I, I don't trust that. I don't trust that little mascot. It's gonna get into my brain and make me change, twist my mind. No. Okay, and then we've also got some Sweet Peach Creamy Peach Oil Lip Gloss. Peach oil? Like what? Is that a thing? Is that, do, how do you get that? Do you squeeze the pit? Like, where does that even come from? And why is it an appropriate, like, is it good for your lips? I guess it's like a good lip oil or something. What? This is like the gimmick of all gimmicks. Like, pick a cute name, pick a, pick one defining factor, lump all these other products into that cute name and the cute defining factor. It all smells like peaches, they all roughly look peachy and look good on white girls. And, you know, we can brand it with this horrifying little peach mascot thing. Gimmick! Gimmicky! No! I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna buy any of the Stinky Peach collection. I don't care if there's a frickin' purse. I don't care, I'm not gonna buy it. I don't need it, and I'm not gonna buy it. What I'm not gonna smell! This. Makeup for oh, it's upside down. This is one of those Makeup Forever Artist Shadow Palettes. Nine pan palette, I got it on sale. This is the Artist Palette Volume 2. Yeah, I'm not even gonna brush it off, it's so sh Do not buy something just because it is on sale. If something is on sale but you've already wanted it, 
or you would purchase it if it was not on sale, then you can buy it. But if you see something and it's on sale and you're like, well, I never really was interested in that, but you know, it's on sale, so I might as well try it. Do not buy it. You're not going to have the same appreciation for it. You're not going to personally value it the way that you would if you bought it because you really loved it or really wanted it. If you're just buying it because it's on sale, you're gonna treat it like it's something you just bought because it's on sale. And I admit that I, kind of just bought this because it was on sale and it freaking sucked and I'm pissed off. <laughs> Did buy it, didn't need it, definitely don't want it, never want it ever again, never want any of them ever again in my world. Sorry about it. Bye, moof. I don't do this too often and so when I do it, you know it's serious. I am going to anti-haul an entire brand and this brand is Black Up. So they were founded by an African makeup artist in France. And they are a makeup brand that caters to women of color, people with deeper skin tones. The products are very well suited to people that have deeper skin tone. I purchased a beautiful like peachy blush and a beautiful matte black eyeliner that I thought was to die for. It was like expensive, it was 19 bucks, but it was fabulous. Beautiful, matte, pigmented, loved it. Then I found out Oh, hell no, this is not a black-owned makeup brand at all. Not only is it not a black-owned makeup brand, it is a makeup brand that was founded by a black person and then passive-aggressively, horribly, and unethically stolen from him. If you want to read the entire story about why Black Up is like a total piece of <laughs> company that not only exploited the trend of like fighting racism systemically by buying makeup from black-owned makeup brands, but has like literally, like, like actually oppressed and taken advantage of the original founder of this company and totally, you know, just like shut them out of the, like it was just, it's just a whole, I, I won't go into the entire story. Read the post by Black Vixen Beauty, which I will link down below to hear the entire story. It is so disgusting to capitalize off of the hype of a potentially socially progressive movement. That is so nauseating. It's so infuriating to someone who is very dedicated into actually doing things that help different causes like Black Lives Matter and transgender rights and immigrants' rights and people that like actually need support. When you see someone taking that same rhetoric and turning it into just pure profit without actually benefiting any people of color, especially like the person that created the frickin' brand, ugh, no. Uh, it's, it's not only like this is just like, oh, it's like they're kind of like bad and like, you know, some of their policies are bad or like, oh, she went on Instagram and like talked shit about someone, so like we should boycott her. No, this is like disgusting, it's racist, it's bullshit. You can watch my haul video in which I talk about this brand positively because I thought it was a black owned makeup brand. Girl, do your research. Like I should have done my research more before supporting this brand and I regret that I spent any money on it. I'm happy to say that I returned all of the products that I purchased from this brand. I will never ever purchase from them again. If you're here and you're trying to be a smart consumer and you're with me and we're trying to change the whole freaking world and the way that we buy things, you have to show brands like this that you are not stupid. You're not gonna be swept up into like just feeling good about yourself by supporting this black owned makeup brand. No, you're gonna freaking learn the backstory of things. You're gonna pay attention. You're gonna read. You're gonna read this blog post. You're gonna see the reality of their ways and you're not going to let like this slide. Shame on you. I, I I don't know what else to say. Shame on you, Black Up. So disgusting. And you know, a, a lot of you may already know this story. A lot of you shared it with me as I was, you know, when I posted that video. So thank you so much for helping educate me about these things. And I am just trying to pay it forward and educate you. Do not support Black Up. They are not a black owned makeup brand. And I think it's just like disgusting business practices and human practices. Unethical insulting, racist, and infuriating. Bye, black up, bye. This is Benefit's box blush in the shade California. If you've watched me for a while, you kind of know that I have issue with Benefit's packaging, with the typography, the graphic design, where it's kind of oh, scatterbrained, it's all over the place, it doesn't make any sense, I don't like it. Also, I've never really loved their face products or like makeup products, you know. Um, I've tried their professional primer, I think it's okay. And you know, you also know that I don't really like puns, so something like California. All those reasons aside, there is one huge reason why I'm not going to buy this $29 box blush. The reason is, the first time I saw this blush in person was in a vending machine at an airport. 
This is not fair. It's not fair to have a makeup vending machine at the airport. The duty freeze are already too much. I already think it's too hard for me to resist buying the Chanel Eau de Tendre or whatever, that Chanel thing that I've always wanted to get. That I, like, I have trouble enough resisting buying that at the freaking duty free, okay? I don't need to then buy my gate, like, and at least the duty free shit is like all in a duty free, right? So if you don't go on the duty free, you don't have to be confronted with it. The benefit vending machines are like next to the water fountain. I'm like refilling my water bottle like before like a three hour flight from Atlanta and like I, I'm confronted with California in a vending machine that takes credit cards? No, no, I'm already fragile. I'm in an airport. I've already been through TSA. My liquids are in a plastic bag. Like all, my life is already in shambles. I'm sitting in a chair flying through the air. Like it's already a shitty day. Please do not take advantage of my weakened morale and mental state by putting a convenient vending machine of makeup. No, what? That takes credit cards? Not fair. It's, it's mean. It's just mean spirit. That's not fair. That's like impulse buying out of control. Where is like the one place where people are, where like they are so illogically stressed and frustrated and just would give anything to like have a little relief of that. Why do you think people even buy those freaking neck pills? Like the airport is like the place where like we spend the stupidest money on the stupidest items and Benefit knows that. And so they were like, we're not gonna market our makeup based on its merits or try to get people to buy it because it's actually good. No, we're gonna put it in a freaking vending machine in an airport and make people buy it when their feet are all inflated because of deep vein thrombosis or whatever and they're jet lagged and they had to pay $6 for a Chex Mix. Leave them alone. Leave us alone at the airport. Like, let us, let us please be free of the bombardment of ridiculous makeup hype. Please, please just give us some relief, some solace, something. Just let me wait at my gate in peace. I want to see your cute little vending machine trying to get me to buy California. No, I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. And I think that is just plain rude. No benefit. No. You are not cleared for takeoff. This is... It's just not fair. It's just rude. That's rude. Finally this. So these are, uh, these are some brush sets from Wayne Goss. These are sold on Beautylish.com, uh, which is a, a makeup retailer that kind of does like a lot of high-end brands. They sell Natasha Denona. Apparently they're shipping and packaging and everything and their selection's really good. I've never ordered from them, so I can't vouch for any of that. These are available. There's three different sets. There is the collection, which is $210. There's the face set, which is $250, which is most appealing to me. I mean, I'm a sucker for face brushes. These look amazing. Then there's the anniversary set for $225. So these brushes look amazing. They're all Japanese made. They're all natural bristles and they claim to be cruelty free. Here's the deal. I can't justify spending this much money on a set of makeup brushes, period, even if they were like amazingly made. I don't own any Hakuhodo. I don't own any Chikahodo. I just can't afford those. I just know I can't. And if you can't afford them, then you can't afford them and then you shouldn't buy them. Bottom line, right? Furthermore, I think a brush set on its own, unless it's like really affordable, I think isn't really worth it. Like I bought a vegan brush set from Morphe on Hot Look for like 10 bucks years ago, and it's been amazing, I love it. Do I use every single brush in it? No, but it's fine because I spent so little money on it. When I spend $250 on a brush set, I better use every single freaking brush. But just looking at these, I know there's gonna be brushes that I'm not gonna use. So know yourself, know your makeup habits, really take a good look at these brushes and see would you use all of them? If the answer is no, if the answer is like I wouldn't even use most of them, then don't buy this set. Don't. If you really want to try these brushes, why not buy an individual brush? Because they're also sold separately on Beautylish. However, I don't think I recommend doing that either. Because the other reason why I'm not going to buy any of these Wayne Goss brushes is because they are natural bristle brushes, yet they claim to be cruelty free. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm not exclusively cruelty free. I have a lot of nuanced opinions about cruelty free makeup. I have many videos where I talk about MAC and Estee Lauder. I have like a whole saga with them that I've been dealing with. I am not fully on the cruelty free bandwagon for a lot of reasons. And one of those reasons is that I feel like the words cruelty free are a little overused and sometimes could like represent, you know, greenwashing where people like say that they're environmentally friendly or something without really having any proof to back it up. I've been hearing a lot of things recently that like, yes, a cruelty free makeup exists where it means like you don't test on animals and stuff like that, but it's really hard to like have cruelty free makeup that's also not vegan. 
Like, these aren't vegan. Like, they're made from animal hair, natural bristle. So it mean, if they're cruelty-free, I guess it means that they don't test on animals, but they somehow got the hair off the animals. And until I see Wayne Goss combing a blue squirrel himself, and given a little treat, I'm not gonna believe that these are cruelty free. And what's more, the Beautylish website has like a whole manufacturing process photo series where you could see like, how are these brushes made? The manufacturing process, however, starts once the hair is, it's, you don't see any pictures of the squirrels or the minks or whatever the bristles are from, that you just see them already harvested. So I, I respect that they're trying to like show you more of the manufacturing process and how they're made and that they're handmade and they're touched by 20 artisans in Japan. But who touched the squirrel that removed the hair from it? Like I, that, that process seems to be conspicuously left out of the little photo essay on the Beautylish website. And I don't think it's for no reason, right? I think it's a little suspicious that they've been very open. They're saying it's cruelty-free, it's natural bristles, but it's cruelty-free. Let's show you all the parts of the process. Yet they don't show you where, how the hair is actually extracted. I, prove me wrong, Beautylish, Wayne, prove me wrong. Go ahead, show me how your natural hair bristles are harvested and maybe I will change my tune about this. Educate me, teach me. I, I'm the first to admit ignorance. I love learning. If you know how something can be natural bristles and cruelty free, tell me about it down below. But until then, I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna spend upwards of $200 on a brush set that A, I'm not gonna use all the brushes of, B, are cruelty free, but natural and is confusing uh, and are just so damn expensive. I just can't. I'm sorry. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Sorry, Wayne. Goss darn it. I'm not going to buy it. That was bad. That was a bad one. I can't say goss darn it. That's... Oh my goss. Thank you so much for watching! Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you really want to help support me and see more videos like this, consider making a per video donation to me on Patreon. Patreon's a great way for you to help support my work and not force me to rely on YouTube ad revenue, which is a little iffy these days. Thank you so much to everyone that is already supporting me on Patreon. You know how much I love you and you know how much your donations help make this channel stay alive. And again, please check out my Listen Up series right now, especially my video on white privilege. I'm going to link to it right here in the middle of the screen as soon as I'm done signing off. Thanks again so much for watching. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye! What am I gonna buy? It's the best. The best of what I'm not gonna buy. The best of the best of the rest of them. The best of them. The best best. Best buy, not buy. Not gonna buy the best. The best of I'm not gonna buy. The best I'm not gonna buy. The best. 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 Best not buy. Best not buy. The best not buy. The and I hold and I hold. Why I'm not gonna buy. Not glued. Not glued down. See how she survives karaoke. Oh, girl. In many ways, we're all becoming more isolated, whether that's geographically, technologically, or emotionally. Despite the fact that we live in a world with instant access to billions of human stories, this isolation can make us unwilling to understand other people's experiences, and it even might make us more susceptible to being convinced by more powerful people like us that these other people are really to blame for all of our problems. <laughs>